or good evening and welcome to this evening's edition of Church Without Boundaries. It's great to be back with you after what seems quite a long break. I'd really like to ask you a question this evening and uh, I'd really like you to answer it honestly. None of what I call the Sunday morning lying. You know what I mean by that, don't you? When somebody asks you how you are and you reply, well, I'm fine, thank you, when actually you're feeling anything but fine. So my question this evening is, how are you coping with this third period of lockdown? Sometimes we Christians think we have to be bubbling over with happiness all the time, as if we're just fresh out of the deep joy Bible school, because if we don't, then we are letting Jesus down, our family and friends down, and ourselves, if we uh, dare to admit, actually, I'm not feeling or not finding life uh, very easy at the moment. Penny and I have been feeling a bit this way since New Year, yet uh, we sailed through the first lockdown, the first two. In fact, we actually enjoyed the first one enormously. But each morning at the moment, we ask each other where we are on the scale. And uh, we have to, I have to admit that so often this month, we've both said we are below average. Despite the lockdown, I've spoken to quite a number of folk when out walking Archie uh, with Penny. Um, and it's incredible that the majority have said they're finding this lockdown particularly difficult. Actually, it's far better to be totally honest with God as to how we're coping or how we're feeling, because it's only when we admit our worries, our concerns, our anxieties, or even our depressions to him, that he is able to come alongside us and be the support we so need. To give us the strength that we crave for and to give us the peace and hope that we desire. Remember that it, it is when we are weak that he is strong. It is when we come to the end of our ability to cope that Jesus steps in and carries us. I hope many of you heard and uh, were inspired by Hannah's message on hope last Thursday evening and that lifted your spirits considerably. I'm convinced from reading scripture and hearing many preachers proclaim it that the gospel of grace is absolutely true because it separates Christianity from every other mainstream faith. From my limited knowledge of other faiths that all or that it requires or all their followers are required to do, do, do and keep on doing. With Jesus we have a very different perspective because he has done everything for us. Jesus, all he asks of us is to believe in him and receive from him. One of the causes of my feeling a bit down at present actually has nothing to do with lockdown, but because we're not seeing the manifestations of his finished work on the cross in our community. I have the privilege of being able to send out our messages on the prayer chain and the vast majority are for people who are sick. I've been praying for healing for my penny for the last 29 years now, without a breakthrough. Does this mean that I stop believing in what scripture tells me, that by his stripes we are healed? Not for a second. I don't have the answers as to why we're not seeing the miracles of healing but I hold on to the hope that we will. I know that God has not given up on us, whereas so many people in our country have given up on him. A few nights ago, I couldn't sleep. So I got up, sat in the lounge and prayed. After a while, I felt the Lord tell me to watch something on YouTube on my iPad. The first thing that popped up was entitled the fastest growing church in the world. And it was all about the explosion of Christianity in Iran. It lasted for about 30 minutes and started with an Iranian man, an engineer, a Muslim by birth, 
who became a Christian and then fled to America, leaving his younger, much younger brother and parents back in Iran. He explained how, because of Jesus's finished work on the cross, he had rejected Islam and received Jesus into his life. He told of the terrible persecution his family had been put under, how his younger brother, who was just 16 years old at the time, had been imprisoned for two years. And then when he was 18, on his 18th birthday, he was executed by firing squad. His parents were told that his body was waiting collection, but they would have to pay to recover it. Yet despite this persecution, the likes of which we just cannot comprehend, millions, and I mean millions of Iranians, are turning to Jesus, especially the younger people. They are seeing visions of Jesus. They are witnessing the manifestations of his promises, uh, and particularly um, in healing. Yet the most overwhelming importance these lovely people have is that their salvation is assured through Jesus. After seeing this, I could do nothing but thank Jesus for all that he's done for us, for the blessings that we have, and to praise him for each one of them. Am I still feeling down? Well, I'm not back to where I'd like to be, but I'm above average now rather than below. I know spring is on its way despite the wintry weather, but I have another hope that is the most important one of all. This is my hope in Jesus Christ. There are a considerable number of references to hope in the Bible. The writer to the Hebrews says this in chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold on unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who has promised is faithful. What hope is that we profess? One of my favourite definitions of hope is found in the song which goes, my hope is found in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Because of his shed blood on the, on the cross at Calvary, I can now boldly say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not because of anything I've done, or deserve to, to have, but simply because of what Jesus has done for me in making me righteous in God's eyes when he took all my sins, past, present and future, upon himself and nailed them to the cross. Again, the writer of the Hebrews makes this statement in chapter 11, verse 1, when he says this, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Sometimes during these dark days of winter and in this current pandemic, <clears throat> it's hard to see God at work, but be in no doubt that he is. I used to have a sign on my desk at the uh, University in Plymouth where I worked for many years, which read, I know the sun is shining above the clouds, even if I can't see it. And I know the Lord is at work, even if I can't feel it. Yes, we may have to go through some pretty tough times, whether caused by bereavement, sickness, relationship difficulties, unemployment, or a host of other things that may overtake us. But even in the darkest times, God is there. He who promised is faithful. Even when we feel we can't go on, God is there. He so often carries us when we don't have the strength to walk. So my lovelies, however you may have answered the question I posed earlier, we have a saviour who can be trusted at all times and in all circumstances. We need to be honest with him and uh, allow him to do his work in us. And now may the God of peace grant you his shalom. Amen and God bless you.